Hi everyone! This video is about the making of the girl in boyfriend jeans with butterfly tattoos. I didn't call her a name, I just sort of called her boyfriend butterfly jeans. Unfortunately, I do not have the video of her face. Sometimes I get so carried away with what I'm doing, I forget to film. If you would like to see the sculpting of a smiling face though, I do have one about sculpting the wild tiger. I'll put a link. I sculpted the hands separately as I always do, and I sculpted them together. So when I sculpted them, I sculpted them as one piece with her hands closed together. Some of her fingers sort of stretched outward. So I did that as one piece and then I attached that to the arm, sort of got them into place when the whole body was sculpted. But as you can see with this one, I sculpted the whole thing in one go, which is not what I always do. Sometimes you can, if the pose is kind of quite simple, meaning you've not got any parts bending in on each other, it's a lot easier to sculpt all in one. So once she was baked, I needed to do the jeans. For the jeans, I've built these up in pieces. Usually this is how I would do clothing. Instead of doing it in one piece, you know, sort of rolling out on the pest machine a whole piece of clay and then adding it. I do use that technique sometimes but not as a whole piece so I would never try and put the whole piece of rolled out clay onto the body as a piece of fabric. I rather build it up in, in pieces like building up the little rolls of fabric and I wanted her jeans to look a certain way. I wanted them to look baggy. Also another very important thing is to have reference. I always use reference for everything I do including making a pair of baggy jeans. I'm building the clay up. I use the color of the darkest part of the jeans for the clay and then later on I use paint to make it look a bit stonewashed and distressed. I'm just sculpting using my usual beloved sculpting tools to add pieces of clay and to get those creases. The most important thing is the creases in the fabric make sure they're in the right place. Taking into account her pose. Then I went on to make some flowers for her belt. So I wanted her belt to have some, some flowers on the side. The way I do it is making the roses, roll out a little piece of clay, squish it down with my ball tool, big ball tool, onto my hand. This is not my technique. You can find videos about how to make roses on YouTube. There's a lot of them. And then I attached it to the belt on the jeans using my pin tools to really press it in to make sure it doesn't fall off. You need that raw clay to really adhere here to the clay of the jeans and then I wanted a few extra petals so I just added those after because then you can sort of really place them in the right place once the actual flower is in the place you want it and that's where my pin tools come in really useful as well because you can just get into really small areas and as I say press press the pin tool into the center of the flower where you can't see the hole you've made but it really presses the flower into the clay that you're putting it onto so that you can attach it really well. Once the jeans were baked and the flowers were baked, of course the flowers will bake on the jeans for an hour at the very end. And even though the clay is so small and thin there, baking them for an hour makes them very strong. In my experience, the clays I use, Fimo, Cernet, do not burn. So once she was baked, it was time to paint her. And as I always do, I take a tone that is slightly darker than the color of my clay and I really accentuate all of the shadows on her body. So it's a bit of a painstaking task. You have to just build it up in layers. I use kind of a scrubbing motion. So that's why I don't buy expensive brushes because I use my brushes and abuse them. <laughs> and they become very mushed. And the more mushy and the more sort of messy they become, to a certain degree, the, the more useful they are because I use kind of a scrubbing motion. And of course, I use Genesis for heat set paint, which is now no longer available. So we will have to find an alternative. But for now, while I still have it, that's what I use. It is the best. So it's going to be quite difficult to find something else. But we will give it a good try. I usually do about three layers of the shadows. Here I'm using a dry brush. So I'm painting the paint down. I'm using another brush to really uh, blend it out. So there's no sharp lines. Um, it's very sort of air, almost like an airbrushy kind of an appearance. And once I've done one layer, I dry it with the embossing gun. And then I can move on and do another layer. And sometimes I change the color slightly. It depends on that particular layer. I'll either go darker, pinker bluer it depends all depends on the clay that i'm using the, the figure i'm doing and what i think it needs he's setting them in between with my embossing gun that is not enough though it still needs to go back in the oven at the end because it does dry your paint enough to add another layer on top but it still has a sort of a chalky look to it you really need that end where you bake it in the oven for about 20 minutes if you've already baked your figure fully because you're just baking it to bake the paint. If you haven't baked it properly yet then it all needs to go in the oven for an hour. So then I moved on to painting the jeans. So for the jeans I had that base color that was the darkest color that I'd used of the clay and then I just looking at reference again because I always look at reference I always want to work from life. So I'm looking at the reference figuring out what color would be the lighter sort of stonewashed or distressed area of the jeans. Mixed a sort of yellowy, I think it was a sort of a yellowy pale blue color and started to 
put that in the areas where your jeans would be really worn. And of course I've got my paintbrush and then I've also got a dry brush to sort of blend that out, make sure there's no hard lines. Then I moved on to her tattoos. So I gave her butterflies and flowers because flowers are just my favorite thing to paint, especially roses. So I started with the base color for the rose and then building up the darker areas of shadow and lighter areas of highlight. I've painted roses for so many years, I don't really follow a lot of reference for them. I do sometimes actually. I kind of have a technique and I just use that where you have the medium color base down first and then you build up the shadows and the highlights on top of that. And really there isn't a set steps. It's really just putting a highlight where you think you need one, a shadow where you think you need one and so sort of building, building until you get something that you like. And then I was carrying on with putting a little bit of shine on her buckle, on her buttons, on her jeans. I really love sculpting things like jeans. So uh, to try and get them as close to reality as possible is just great fun. And then she was finally finished. Um, there she is. I gave her purple hair. And yes, hopefully she looks like she is just laughing at a very funny joke or just having a really good time. That was the feeling I wanted for her was to just be really happy and full of joy. Thank you for watching and thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for supporting me. I really appreciate every one of you. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, I'd be so happy to welcome you into my studio. I'm currently uploading one hour of sculpting tutorials each month at patreon.com forward slash Renata Jansen. There are hundreds of videos on there for you to watch. You can join for less than $2 per week. We've just finished sculpting the Salty Mermaid in the teacup and I've posted the first part of sculpting the Absinthe Fairy for this month. I'd love to see you there. You can also sign up for my mailing list for free by clicking on the link in the video description. Everyone who signs up gets a free in-depth sculpting a nose tutorial. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thank you. See you again soon.